Tonight, the body of a young Hoosier boy is somewhere between Indianapolis and Missouri, and his mother wants closure. While his father is in jail facing charges in the boy's death. This is a story of lies, betrayal, rage, and murder. The mother says she was fooled and now continues to mourn and pray her son's body is found. WRTV digital reporter Vic Record collaborated on this story for broadcast and found out the boy's father had used five names. Haley Kelly was in love. Or so she thought. She was a single mom from Wabash. In 2008, she turned to a dating app to meet someone, and she did. He was Miguel. A man with five names. He was charming, and now, now that I know him, know him, um, I know it was just manipulating. Um, but I couldn't see past that at first. They rented movies together, went bowling, enjoyed spending time together. Haley's new relationship with Miguel and Kama seemed perfect, but it was all a lie. Even his name, which wasn't Miguel and Kama at all. I believe that he was using me. The man whom Haley was dating has used several names in the past. According to federal court documents, he's from Nigeria, arrived to the U.S. in 2002 illegally under an assumed name, and eventually, while staying with a Nigerian family in North Carolina, he stole the identity of the family's teenage son. He wound up in Indiana, using the stolen name to attend college classes, take out student and car loans, and file tax returns. Even when he met Haley, he was using one of his aliases. By the time she found out, they already had a son together named Nakota. When my son was um, a year and a half, I found out who he was. And he didn't come around like, a lot. Anthony Dibia was using several aliases, and in 2011, a victim called the FBI to report the fraud. Agents arrested him in Muncie. Dibia was convicted of social security fraud, identity theft, and misusing documents to enter the U.S. He was sentenced to 34 months in federal prison. At sentencing, Dibia presented this letter to the judge expressing his sorrow and saying he didn't want his kids to grow up without a father because of his mistakes. Haley also received letters while Dibia was in prison. In many, he pleaded for forgiveness and promised to be a good parent. It was mostly, I love my son. Um, can you send me money on my books? Um, things like that. Haley's feelings had faded and says her relationship with Dibia was beyond repair. When her son's father was released from prison, he returned to Indianapolis and was granted partial custody of Nakota, who at this point was seven years old. We go to the games and support his team, and it's another one of those things, what would Nakota want me to do? Nakota loved playing baseball, and he was good at it. He loved Michael Jackson and scary movies and Toy Story. He was a kid with a bright smile, and he was a kid who spent most of his time in Wabash with his mom and every other weekend at his father's apartment in Indianapolis. Haley provided to WRTV documents showing there were four claims of abuse or neglect while Nakota was visiting his father. Things like light bruises, administering an overdose of ADHD medicine. Nakota told DCS workers his father hit him, yelled at him, and pulled him down the stairs. All of those claims were deemed unsubstantiated. Dibia denied the abuse and said the overdose was an accident and claimed Haley was trying to get more child support and push him out of his son's life. Friday, he wanted to go to his game, and I asked him, I said, Nakota, you really want to go to your game? And he said, yes. He says, my, game ne my team needs me. It was July 17th, 2020. Nakoda was 10 years old. He wanted to play in his last Little League game of the season. Nakoda's mom let him, even though they both knew it would mean he'd be a couple hours late for his weekend with his father. When Haley dropped off her son, it would be the last time she would ever see him. Police say Dibia smothered his own son the next evening and disposed of his remains, which have never been found. People can go to funerals and go to the grave and talk to their kid or the loved ones that they lost, and I'm not able to do that because we don't have a body. Coming up on WRTV News at 6, the last conversation Haley Kelly had with her son and the hunt for the boy's father after he sent her a cryptic text message. Plus, you can read more in-depth right now when you find Vic Reichert's story on WRTV.com.